Recently, I released a video talking about the lily pond, my take on a cellular automata. You all seemed to like that video quite a bit, and in fiddling around with it, I discovered that you can actually build logic gates in the lily pond. So, what's the next logical step? Well, to build a computer inside of this engine. I've wanted to learn about how computers work for a while now, and this seems like a good opportunity to do it. With any luck, we can also learn a bit more about the limits of the lily pond. To my viewers who only subscribe to me for philosophy content, I'm so very sorry that there's been such a lack of that lately. There is more philosophy coming very soon, please do be patient. And now, it's time to start building a computer, beginning with logic gates. Now, you may already know this, but a logic gate is just a way of looking at signals, which can be on and off, called inputs, and giving different signals at the other end, which can be picked up by other logic gates, called outputs. In the lily pond, there are three types of logic gates that you can build easily, which are AND gates, NOT gates, and OR gates. Fortunately for us, you can build any other logic gate using a combination of these ones. Now, rather than using on or off, which obviously doesn't exist in the lily pond, we're going to use flows of tadpoles as our on and off. This will allow us to more easily compare them and also leave tadpoles with more gaps to allow for signals of different strengths. The OR gate is incredibly easy to make. All you need to do is have two flows of tadpoles next to each other, then put a redirector here like this, and another one up here like this to merge the two signals. Now, whenever either of these is on, there will be a flow of tadpoles coming out of here. The AND gate is similarly easy to make. All that you have to do is get two flows next to each other, which can be accomplished by putting two redirectors like this, and then putting a fuser here, which will only activate if both of these flows are active. And then we can put a couple of deleters just after the fuser to make sure that the other flows don't continue on their own. The NOT gate is a little more tricky, but still nice and easy. All that you need to do is put a redirector going up and then to the side and then down to create a wall of tadpoles, which go into a deleter down here. You need to use the splitter cell here to make sure that the tadpoles have as few gaps as possible. Now all that you need to do is add a tadpole and a duplicator down here, which will be blocked by the downward flow of tadpoles. Now when you turn this input on, our tadpoles won't be able to pass this wall, but when we turn it off, the wall of tadpoles goes down, and the tadpoles going to the right will be able to get through, giving us our output. Okay, well, now we have some very basic logic gates, but if we're going to build a full-on computer, or at least a calculator, we're going to need a few more. So let's make some more logic gates. A NAND gate 
is very easy to make once you understand the basic logic gates. All you need to do is put a NOT gate in front of an AND gate. And there we are, there's our NAND. A NOR gate is similarly easy. It will only turn on if neither of its inputs are on. All we need to do to accomplish this is to connect an OR gate up to a NOT gate. An XOR is like an OR, except that it turns off if both of the inputs are on, but stays on if just one of the inputs is on. To build this, you would think that you can just add a fuser here, and then use a splitter to get it up above our two lines here, and then turn that into a knot, But do you see the problem here? It gets backed up, and now we can never turn this back on again. So what we need to do is to, rather than just have our two lines run into the wall like this, we need to add a lily pad and a lily pad here, and then we need to add two splitters which will mean that the tadpoles that can't move on are deleted rather than just stopping, backing up, and clogging everything. An XNOR is pretty much the exact opposite of an XOR. What it does is it turns on if both or neither of its outputs are on, but turns off if just one of its outputs is on. This is one of the more challenging gates to build in the lily pond, but it's not too hard. First, we want to take both of the inputs, put them into an OR, and then make that into a NOT, and then we want to add a fuser here, which will detect if both of them are on. Now, you might have noticed that even though it's detecting that both of them are on and sending out an output, it won't be able to get to the finish because our NOT gate is stopping it. To fix this, we can put a splitter here, which will allow the AND to get over the wall and to the output. And that's every single basic logic gate made in the lily pond, which means that we really could build a computer in here if we wanted to. I fully intend to return to this series, maybe build a calculator or explore how data can be stored in the lily pond. For now though, I think we're going to call it here. Have a wonderful day everybody. And just like with the last video, you can find a link to where you can play around on the lily pond for yourself in the description. Goodbye for now.